Hey everybody, it's late, it's incredibly late, I really should have gone to bed hours ago, hours and hours as a matter of fact, but uh, I was having certain technical difficulties, and so I chose to push forward through them, and of course I overcame, I did slay the dragon as twere, anyway, so... I done did it, and I decided to do the thing that I do, uh, seeing how it's a weekend and whatnot. I'm going to slide this over here right quick. And uh, you know what time it is, but, you know, uh, first, I have to do what we always have done, because um, I have to play the theme song. You know the theme song. Don't act like you don't know the theme song. Sing along if you know it. This has always been. Yeah, and I uh, would like to thank uh, the Chanticleer Rejects for singing that. They're a musical group whose name I don't remember, who shall not be thanked in this week's friggin' uh, closing credits because I forgot to put them in. Ah, I'll put them in. Hold up just a second. Pause. And in literally no time at all, they're there. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, I have to do that voice that I always do in every episode and have never not done in a single episode ever. It's the eighth one. I've done it in the seven previous episodes, all of them without fail. Here we go. Er, Weekend Type Fun, Volume 8. Everybody loves the voice. Sure do. Anyway, uh, part one. A non-exhaustive list of ways in which unscrupulous persons have murdered me. And when I say murdered, I mean precisely what you think I mean. What follows is a list of ways in which my life has come to a number of unfortunate and untimely ends. Rather. Uh, number one. Lord Chattering Codswallop the Fourteenth convinced a bull elephant that I was a female elephant in heat. The excited male cleft my anus in twain, and I was left to bleed the remainder of my life's blood out of my gaping rectal wound, and the pain was unspeakable. As was this accent which is going all over the place and is done. It's done now. Stupid accent. It's hard to keep going, dingus. Charles Mingus. Come on. All right, just do the accent. The people like the accent. Okay, we got it. I was shot in the left testicle with a blunderbuss after having been cut. Shall we say? That's pretty sure that's how I do Hagrid for my kids when we read Harry Potter. They will not let me do any other voice ever. They won't. If I try to do any other voice, they're like, No, you stop it. You stop. If I try to do a uh, Severus Snape Harry Potter... I'm going to Avada Kedavra you in the face. You know, a l- l- little bit of that nonsense. They're like, no, you don't do that. And I'm like, oh, God, children. Anyway, so, yeah, let's read this in an accent. I got done shot in the left testicle with the blender bus. Uh, doesn't work. I was shot in the left testicle with a blunderbuss after having been caught, shall we say, in an indecent state with the wife of a visiting foreign dignitary whose name escapes me at the moment. 
His wife's name was Cunegonde, and she had double-jointed breasts. Oh, yes, I remember her very well. Number three. I caught the plague from a travelling merkin merchant. His merchandise was truly something to behold, but unfortunately nobody's wife, <laughs> wife got to see my purchase. Not even mine, if you know what I mean. I'll tell you what, once you've been to community college, you can ruddy well do any old British accent they call for. Ain't it right, governor? You're a good bloke. Yeah, you're a good bloke. So what say I don't put this knife into your gullet and you give me five quid, see? I'm going to go get me a pint of the good. Anyway, that is what we call a upper-class gentleman's accent. Yep, the upper-class gentleman. Rarely used, rarely heard. As was my duty to the crown, I was overseeing the execution of some uppity northerner or another, and let's just say the axeman's backswing hit its mark surer than the foreswing did. You know what I mean? I'd rather think you do. Number five. The chieftain of some savage tribe or another had me buried up to my neck in an anthill because his daughter gave birth to a curiously light-skinned baby. If only these people would learn to stop blaming their problems on the Empire. They might actually have a nation of their own some day. Uh, there's like sometimes a sad commentary hidden behind the joke where it's like, oh, people were really racist back then and really thought things like this. How do I know? Because I've read anthropo uh, anthropological journals from the 17 and 1800s and uh, this is pretty much it. This is pretty much what you get. Anyway, moving onward. I had a brief stint as an involuntary kamikaze during the war. That one was over quick enough. The death, I mean. Good heavens, the war dragged on a piece. Did it not? No. I dare say it did. Number seven. Hit in the head with the safe containing my life savings. My dastardly nephew managed to both arrange for my murder and the purloining of my personal fortune in one fell swoop. Well, the safe didn't so much swoop as it did fall straight as an arrow and crush my unsuspecting head like an overripe papaya. Overripe papaya. That's a good tongue twister if you're an actily sort, if you like. Unique New York. Unique New York. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Overripe papaya. Overripe papaya. The queen has never done anything wrong. The queen has never done anything wrong. Unique New York. Unique New York. We apologize. The person's voice that you just heard the person behind the voice the person what have now it's happening to me anyway he went crazy we had to shoot him and now i'm gonna get shot bang oh sound effects budget ain't what it used to be moving on the gypsy's curse proved to be much more effective than i'd previously thought now, here's the thing I wonder, and this is a 
valid concern. Okay. So, Gogol Bordello, your favorite gypsy punk band. They are your favorite gypsy punk band. They are perhaps the only gypsy punk band you know uh, for reasons partially having to do with the fact that they are the only gypsy punk band anyone knows. Except for a guy sitting somewhere who heard that and is like, Oh, I know another one because my knowledge of things is vast. Anyway, regardless. So I've heard that they prefer to be called Roma. And I've also heard that, um, yeah, because Gypsy has negative connotations and people use the word Gyp. Be, you know, tying it to a stereotype that uh, Roma were untrustworthy, conniving, thieving types. Anyway, regardless. So, it seems that there's been some reclamation of the word gypsy, like Gogol Bordello has an album called Gypsy Punks. So, have they reclaimed the term? These are legitimate questions. I mean, in the middle of attempting and failing at comedy, we have very important questions. Anyway, comment down below if you are one of those filthy gypsies. <laughs> there you got warts all over you and uh, you still foreigners money and uh, you have no conscience whatsoever. Oh, geez, every bad stereotype. No, I actually like okay, I'm a I'm a I'm a backtrack because it makes it seem like I have a negative view of uh Roma. I do not, as a matter of fact. I've had no interactions with them over the course of my life other than like Gogol Gogol Bordello music videos, which do yourself a favor and uh go See, the one is called Immigrada, I believe. They come in rougher. It's a really good video. It's awesome, and I like it. Anyway, important questions. Sidetracking the comedy. What little there was to begin with. On a dare from the Duchess de Grand Cul, whose bloomers I was desirous to ascend... I attempted to cross the tracks on a penny farthing before the locomotive arrived. I was not successful in either endeavor. Yeah, that was a terrible reading of a semi-humorous bit. Thanks, me! Two words. Poisoned monocle. Pip him, they poisoned my monocle, they did they. Hey, they poison me, Monaco. Yep, all of the accents. I am a proper British gentleman. Oi, right ow, pip pip chitty ow, and what not. I wear a Monaco. And it is poisoned. Oh, yeah, let's definitely have this. What? Part two, education. I'm trying to run a professional show here, and I just... Uh, look, i will tell you the truth. I would yell at a room full of white people, but I'm growing tired of that. <laughs> just, you know... Now's not a time for too many white people. I mean, I'm me. I'm enough. Okay, this program attempts to provide important educational messages to the community whenever possible. We feel uh, the program has a certain lull and has hit a certain lull. Boy, did it. Never really got off the ground. And will not therefore suffer a drop in interest if we place this segment here. Yeah, so the people aren't going to notice. Go get a snack. This is the part where you go get a snack. Just open the fridge and stare blankly and pretend that you're not helping kill the planet with the fridge open, wasting electricity. Do it. You're going to anyway. Okay. 
Uh, so it won't seem like it to you at all, but I did, in fact, uh, do just what I suggested. I went and got some food. I put it in my face. I, I ate it with my mouth bit. Um, I chewed it and swallowed it. And, and now, um, I'm ready to be educated. So, uh, but now I have to do a quick microphone check. Quick microphone check. I check these levels. How we do that is I just say some words. They have a list for me. Just read the words on the list. Uh, they're just nonsense and unconnected. They just want to see how certain vowel sounds hit the the microphone. Okay. Um, swollen, swollen, thick, thick, girthy, girthy, engorged, engorged, frothing, frothing, juicy, Juicy ejaculation, ejaculation. Actually, you know, it's hilarious. It was the word ejaculation. Um, one of the primary meanings of the word is to say something loudly, to sort of interject with a loud statement. And so the following sentence could be 100% clean with no sexual content whatsoever. Oh, yes, the woman ejaculated. See, that's just an excited woman uh, who is saying, oh, yes, no sexual content whatsoever. She's just happy. And saying, oh yes, has nothing to do with the sort of um, multiple failed attempts at Leapfrog, her fully nude male counterpart has attempted. He just keeps failing. He is no good at Leapfrog whatsoever. Anyway, moving on. This bizarre spectacle unlike anything I've ever seen uh, um, education how to not be gay a guide for by and about concerned Christians for Christ who engage in precisely the type of nosy naysaying that Jesus himself was so famous for or for short don't forget the f, f. Actually, I think it's more f, f. Definitely, the microphone loved that sound. And so did we all. So did we all. How to not be gay. Are you a fruit? Gaywad? Queer? Dyke? Switch hitter? Homo? Pansy? Nancy boy? Lady lumberjack? Puff, bugger, femboy, fruitcake, queen, top, bottom, power bottom, nuclear power bottom. Now, now that's a new one. Let's see, uh, um, uh, a power bottom. You see, is a a man who could take a bowling pin without squinting, and uh, a nuclear power bottom is a man who could take a a bowling pin without squinting, and. Uh, Bring the bowling pin to climax. This episode is definitely not for students. If you are a student, I will find out. I will find out that you have watched this. And I will... Oh, boy. I don't know. I don't know what I could possibly do. But just whatever. Okay. How to not be gay. Let's start the list again because it's fun to read. 
Are you a fruit, gaywad, queer, dyke, switch hitter, homo, pansy, nancy boy, lady lumberjack, puff, bugger, femboy, fruitcake, queen, top, bottom, power bottom, nuclear power bottom, sodomite, gold star, bent, rug muncher, bear, twink, fairy, lipstick, flamer, or gaysian? If so, this message is for you. Now, Jesus Christ wants you. He does. He wants you. But guys, guys, okay, the women, like, maybe maybe think about a man in that way. Uh, but men, no. This is our Lord and Savior. He's smiling and happy, and he wants you to be a good Christian. Being a good Christian means not being gay, and it always has been, always since the beginning. You can look back at the early records of Christianity. There was one debate and one debate only. Um, how mean should we be to gay people? And the answer was either super mean or um, straightforwardly not mean, but like actually mean when we're trying to be nice. Yeah. Anyway. Guess which one will run out? It's a matter of historical record. Moving on. Jesus. Follow this handy guide, and you'll be as approved by God as these two. A normal, God-fearing couple, circa 1984. I know the picture's a little dated, but look at this woman. She loves Jesus so much, her mascara is running. And this man loves Jesus so much that sleeves fell off his sweater. It just, that's, that's how much it is. He loves Jesus and the sleeves were just <laughs> gone. My microphone definitely loved that sound. It peaked in a way that was terrifying. Your earballs probably exploded. I apologize to your earballs. Okay. Butch it up, Nancy. A message to the men. Learn to be a manly man like this construction worker here who works hard every day, rubbing sweaty shoulders with other hard-working men. Then he goes home to the village because that's where the picture says he lives. I bet he has a wife there, a wife like you'll have if you'll just learn to be manly like David here. A manlier man I have never seen. Nancy it up, butch. A message to the women. Take a page out of the book of the woman on the right. Her name is Cristal, and I met her at a quaint little bar. Situation, situation, supposed to be situated, tid, situated. I gotta fix mistakes as we m make them. No, as we discover them. If I had fixed them as I made them, then you wouldn't be seeing them now. Her name is Cristal, and I met her in, an, in a quaint little bar situated rather too near the airport, I thought. Anyway, despite her unfortunately large Adam's apple and rather large and meaty hands, Cristal manages to be the very picture of femininity. You boot-wearing, Subaru-driving, forest-dwelling types ought to take a page out of her book. Note her subtle makeup and feminine figure. Now this is a young woman who will make some lucky man very happy someday. Okay, here are other ways to not be gay. If the first two didn't work for you, maybe you're mega-super-ultra-gay. Oh, don't think you're beyond the help of Jesus. If you're mega, super, ultra gay, Jesus is coming for you. He's coming for you. He wants you. He's coming for you. He's knocking on your door. He's sliding his hand on that doorknob. That's right. He's got his hand on the knob, just like in that picture. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and he that will let me, and I will sup with him, and him with me. And we'll talk about, like, whatever happened last week, 
on Wendy Williams, and we'll just be like, two bros, two bros. See, I can quote scripture. People are acting like I can't quote scripture. For lo, thus saith the Lord, when two bros doth hangeth out and talk about Wendy Williams, it be not gay. It just be two bros who know how to have some bro time. Anyway, uh, try to think about Jesus while not picturing what it'd be like if that loincloth slipped a little. The, the gays sometimes, they'll be like, oh, maybe give it a... No, I've looked at this painting for a long time. The loincloth is staying. You cannot undress Jesus with your eyes. Is not happening. I've tried just to see if Satan would allow that to happen. You know, Satan's a tricky little booger. It's that tricky little booger. That's what it says in the Bible. For lo, Satan was a tricky little booger. And the people did say unto the Lord, Hey, Lord, why the crap would you leave us here with this guy to make us not do what you told us to do the whole time? And the Lord was like, I work in mysterious ways. <laughs> like, how about not so many questions? I got a master plan. And the, and the people be like, can we pray? And the Lord was like, for what? And the people were like, I don't know, stuff we want. And the Lord was like, didn't I already say I would prepare things for you? Like in my plan? I mean, I clothe the lilies of the field, friend. Like, what? You're going to pray for... St Look, I have a plan. Don't go mucking up my plan with you asking for stuff because I have a plan for how things are going to go. So, like, just... just I mean, you can pray. I'm not going to say don't pray. I'm just going to say, like, I'm not going to really listen when you do that because, first of all, have you heard yourself? You're kind of annoying. And number two, number dos, number the second one, uh, yeah, I I can't I can't just give you what you want. Do you think I, God, the most godly of godities, want to be having kids who are like, baby, baby, be, I wanted this one, I want a Power Ranger, boop a doop a do, I. I'm not friggin' Santa Claus. I don't just give out Power Rangers. Uh, that's what people pray for the most. Can I have a Power Ranger? And they'd be like, I'd be like, which one? And they'd be like, the red one that murdered somebody? Anyway, yep, that's the one. All right, moving on. Other ways to not be gay. Uh, it's probably not best to think about this picture because this, first of all, this loincloth is like, boop. You can see half of his like V bits, like, like Brad Pitt, you know, in, uh, remember, 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 remember that one scene in Fight Club when Brad Pitt's like, check out my V parts that point to my, you know, that part of me and uh you're like oh i wish i wasn't looking there brad pitt but his his bonitals his like pelvic thrusticles were like hey hey take an extra long look in, in my area which is why you shouldn't go see them r-rated movies they're full of pelvicals and thrusticles and lookatals at genitals it's just not right. But look at how ripping a rip this Jesus is. That's like that's like gay heaven. He all juiced up and sweaty and like, oh, Jesus, super strong. Yeah. Jesus, that's no way to behave. And on your first day out. But since you're such an exceptional beauty... I'm prepared to forgive you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, you all remember that scene from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Remember? It's right after the part where, 
I see you shiver with antissa. Other ways to not be gay. Don't think about this one. This very this by one of the great Italian masters, uh, Renwambert. Renwambert. Yep, one of the great Italian masters. And his masterpiece. No, I mean the painting. I mean this area, like, no. No. Nope, nope, nope. I wish I could red this area so that you would know not to look there. Anyway. Uh, hey, you know what? You need pictures of Jesus? How about this one? I mean, look. This guy... This guy is like man pretty. He's like a pretty man. Like, if you shaved him and put him in a dress, then, like, you would basically have a beautiful woman, basically. Basically, is what I'm saying. And look at those eyes. They have a certain, like, hey, hey, you know what? I see you. I see what you're bringing to the table, and guess what? Y you're invited to the party. Hey, you're good enough. D hey, don't for a moment think you're not good enough. You're, you're coming to this party. Yeah. Get over here, you. Like, for real. I'm like, oh my God, Jesus. You mean me? You don't mean that guy behind me? Oh my God, Jesus. Like, I feel like one of your chosen people. <laughs> anyway, it's okay because you're only seeing it from the shoulders up. You're not like staring at that Jesus loinital area or the booty there'd be some jesus booty pics like you, you don't want any of those anyway moving on okay wait a minute hold up which one of you jokers did this come on fess up do it this is the lord he's my lord that we're talking about here and there is no way that you're allowed to show the Lord's pubitals. Also, wait a minute. Hold the... F okay. Look at this. Jesus is wearing a cross. How close do you think Jesus wants to be to crosses anymore? Like, come on. Jesus doesn't want to have anything to do with crosses. I know it's been done. You're thinking to yourself, hey, hasn't this been done? Yeah, but you know what's on this little miniature cross? A miniature him being put to death. You think he's going to wear an image like, oh my God. <laughs> Do you think um, Elvis wants like a, a freaking... Uh, necklace with with like an effigy of his fat fatty self from the end of his life eating too many peanut butter banana sandwiches and dying on the toilet think elvis wants to hang a toilet around his neck no like come on this is the, and a toilet with an elvis on it a fat elvis like that that's what this is this is fat elvis on a toilet <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my God! Some of my my people's take the um, Christian iconography very seriously. It's so when I'm like, "This fat Elvis on a toilet," if they were to ever see this, they would be uh, very sad. Let's move onward. Uh, other ways to not be gay. Oh, oh, that's right. We're trying to fix the lesbos too. Uh, rewind the video, and when I tell the guys, like, don't think about this one, maybe you, like, think about it, and, like, just think about it, because I think God will be like, well, you're not really supposed to, but it is helping you avoid the terrible, terrible sin of living the sexuality that I implanted in you, uh, so, yeah, uh, it's okay. <laughs> like, right? Okay. 
Uh, <coughs> my God. If ever there was a time for me to edit, it would be right there. But I'm not going to. Oh, okay. Time to get depressing. Other ways to not be gay. Attach electrodes to your genitals and force yourself to watch nude images of men and women, shocking yourself if you become aroused at the wrong time. Hey, here's a fun fact. The Mormon Church actually did this to self-reporting gay BYU students in the 1970s. It's true. It's been documented. Okay, why why do I always have to include a sad fact? I mean, look, my brain, when I get under certain influences, starts being like, you know what's funny? Gay stuff. And like, but then I always start thinking like, oh man, you know, like I I always, I, I don't try to like joke at the expense of gay people. I like try to joke about how we react to the concept of homosexuality within American society sometimes. Anyway, that's always the point, but like sometimes that definitely does not come across. Anyway, but like, um, th- here are two possible reasons for why I include sad facts. Number one, my comedyness is all brucked to bits by an increasingly addled brain. That's not particularly possible. I'm not very addled tonight, um, as luck would have it. Uh, or, or how about this one? Could be that American society has been truly awful to gay people for a very long time. That might be a thing that's true. I mean, maybe. Hey, oh, this is actually very exciting. Um, so today... Uh, today, last day of school, and I, or I mean, teachers, last day of school, students, last day of school is yesterday. I do all the, like, checkout nonsense. Um, so, I was informed that I have official permission to start a GSA and a, a gay-straight alliance, which um, I get to sponsor it. And I get to write the founding documents for it. And I have to say, like, out of all the things that I've ever done as a teacher, this one might be the most important. Like, um, at my uncle's funeral a couple years back, I really started thinking about legacy because the legacy that man left behind is just incalculable. The number of lives that he touched for the better is incredible and um you know like i'm not always the best with people i'm often awkward and stunted and weird i don't hug them when they need hugs i definitely don't say the l word lesbians when i'm when they are like hey do you l word and i'm like haha joke instead I didn't even, like, students that I actually really care about, um, at graduation, just t'other night, moments where we should have hugged, I was, like, doing, like, haha, it's hilarious, I'm hover-handing you in a picture, and, like, I should have just hugged people, but I have this big mental block about it, and I'm sorry, (laughs) so, like, you know, I have weird things about me and like, I, so I often feel like I'm never going to leave the kind of legacy that my uncle left, you know, because of the type of person that he was, you know, he's that sort of rare person who can make you feel like you are the most important person in the world, uh, when he is listening to you because he is giving you all of his attention and he is, you know, genuinely interested in you and, and what you are on about. Um, I, I'm very bad at those things. And so, like, w- when I think about my legacy, it was like, well, what can I... And this is not just, like... When I say legacy, I understand that I will be dead someday in the future. And I also understand 
that I will be forgotten someday in the future. And that's okay. Like a lot of very awesome people in the world have been forgotten. And it's not because um, we don't care about these people. It's that we can't possibly care about everyone. And people tend to be cared about the most by people who knew them when they were alive. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, I know that I'm going to die. I know that I'm going to be forgotten at some point. But like, when you think about your legacy, you think about good that you can put into the world that will survive your own death. And and not for you to get credit for it. And not for people to stop and say like, oh, you know who did this. It is not for that. It is so that you... Can, so that you can have something good in the world that has your fingerprints on it after your death. Like something that matters as a monument to your existence. Um, you know, but an unknown, unspoken, unmarked monument that no one knows bears your fingerprints. Like, I, I'm I'm all for that. So, like, if, let's say I've got, you know, I, I know people don't like it when I put low estimates, so I'll just give it unnaturally high estimate. Let's say that I've got, like, 60 years left in me. Uh, that make me 101 at the time of my passing, which would be a very ridiculously long life. Um... So, yeah, let's say that, um, yeah, so, uh, 75 years from now, long after I should be gone, um, that there is still a thriving GSA on my campus would be amazing or better yet, or better yet, not even needing to have a GSA because everybody's become so accepting, um, that it's not even necessary people are just able to love who they love and be who they are and everybody's just like yeah of course of course we do we let people be who they are and love who they love why wouldn't we um anyway like uh if that's a legacy that i can leave then i am 100 percent fine with it and i don't need my name on it i just um i would like to uh be able to know that I have left this world better than I found it. You know, that's it. That that's that's all. You know, just make some contribution. So no matter how small, uh, put something positive into the world that will reap benefits for other people. You know, it, it's like um, you know, uh, pioneers pressing forward, uh, planting trees whose fruit they would never enjoy. Uh, it's like that. That's, that's what I think about. Anyway, moving on. Uh, but let's not stop the comedy train because we basically put the comedy to the screeching halt. Remember comedy? It was like, hey, ha ha. Wasn't I like, oh, don't be gay. <laughs> like who drew, what, what? Anyway, regardless, yeah, so there was apparently a comedy train. Um, let's not stop it. Let's go through some ap apparently true advice given by Mormon Apostle Mark E. Peterson on how to not masturbate. This ought to be rich. Step number one. Never touch the intimate parts of never touch the intimate parts of your body, except during normal toilet processes. Always, Marky Peterson is not Boyd K. Packer. The Lord said, "You uh, may." Anyway, okay. Does this guy look like a guy who has ever masturbated in his life? Uh, we are about to find out <laughs> because he might not have ever given how he tells people to deal with 
the problem of unwanted masturbating. Like, oh no. Okay. Never touch the intimate parts of your body except during normal toilet processes. You know, your toilet processes where you gotta touch those intimate parts of your body. Like, hey, it's just toilet time. We just got us some toilet time. We got... T what? We got to touch them intimate parts of the body. Anyway, moving onward. Oh, that's right. I did change these up. How to not bang the bishop. That's right. We, get, we went through some euphemistic language. By the way, there was a, a like... Um, Oh, uh, I want to say theatrical performance, but it was actually performance communication, which is very different. <laughs> and it's different in that uh, the audience is more bored. I don't know. My major was stupid. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, there was a guy who converted to Mormonism and then found out that he was gay and then was treated very horribly by the Mormon church on his way out. And he wrote this play about it or one-man show, or performance communication piece, or whatever the crap you want to call it, called Banging the Bishop. And uh, Ira Fulton, who is a Mormon who has lots of money, was like, No, you shall not perform such things at my university. And they were like, uh, But this is a publicly funded university, and um, you know it's a state university. And he's like, I give you lots of money. You do what I say. And they're like, You're right. You give us lots of money. We do what you say. And so this person was not allowed to put on this performance on school grounds. But what it did is it got the word out like extra much and the crowds were apparently lots of them and there were way more performances on an off-campus location. So, yeah. Anyway, fun stuff. Okay. How to not shake hands with the milkman. If you are associated with other persons having the same problem, you must break off their friendship. Never associate with other people having the same weakness. Don't suppose that the two of you will quit together. You never will. You must get away from people of that kind. People like yourself? Like, what? Like, don't hang out with people like that. Oh, people, people like what? People like you, dingus. Don't hang out with them. They're, they're terrible. They're terrible people. Don't hang out with them. They'll make you do horrible things. Oh, uh, what kind of horrible things? Like the ones you currently do, stupid. <laughs> this is great advice. Anyway, uh, just to be in their presence will keep your problem foremost in your mind. The problem must be taken out of your mind, for that is where it really exists. Your mind must be on other and more wholesome things. Okay. So this is apparently for like young men, like the the way that this is written and all of the information I was able to collect on this is apparently for young men, like teenage guys. Okay, uh, teenage guys think about sex like every 0.5 seconds. And so like... Yeah, their mind must be on other more wholesome things. Like, how do you think they're going to just be there thinking about, like, whole wheat bread? Like, my mama's whole wheat bread. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. That's it. Put two loaves of those together and just... <laughs> I'm telling you, like, a teenage boy can sexualize anything. Anything. Like, I... Girls, here's the stupid thing. Like, you know how, like, <coughs> a bra strap is, like, you don't want to have it out there unless it's the, like, late 90s, early 2000s, in which case you do. But, like, um, 
you, you don't want to just like have them out there. Most people don't. But if, if you have a bra strap showing, it's like, eh, who gives a crap, right? Except for teenage boys, this is the this is how disconnected things are. And you need to know this is the lengths that they can go to sexualize something. So, the you know, this is a, a woman's undergarment. Uh, so, like, here's the thing is that you're like, okay... That strap. Yeah, that's a strap. It's a bra strap. It's connected to something that goes on underneath the shirt. Under the shirt, it goes down and it connects to a cup. A cup that is holding a booby. Oh my God, I've never seen something so overtly sexual in my life. Oh boy. Like, what? Which is why I think the idea of dress codes are sexist and stupid. I really do. Because most of them are like, young women, you are responsible for the thoughts and behaviors of young men who can't study when your bra straps are out and your, you know, clavicles are showing and you're showing off your mid riffs. You show off them mid riffs and suddenly all the boys are getting D's in algebra. Well, I mean, they already had D's. The D's are just like extra. Let's just say the boys can't go to the board to do math problems because their D's, how their D's are from looking at your clavicles and your midriffs. Your clavicles and your midriffs, ladies. How dare you? How dare you show your clavicles and your midriffs? Anyway. You gotta keep your mind on them wholesome things, young men. You do. Hey, bring it in, young man. Keep your mind on them wholesome things. Oh, I like bread. Yeah, I like bread. Think about bread. Big, soft, jubbly, wubbly loaves of bread. How your mom leans over when she's baking them. And I can just take a look at her shirts. Just slightly open a little bit. And I just take a peekaboo with just a little bit of... Anyway, regardless, moving on, men. Keep your mind on wholesome things. Bread. Okay. How to not churn your own butter. When you bathe, do not admire yourself in a mirror. Never stay in the bath for more than five or six minutes, just long enough to bathe and dry and dress. And then get out of the bathroom, into a room where you will have some member of your family present. I love this because, so this is my theory for why I think Mark E. Peterson is like completely asexual and has never masturbated. Aside from like the everything about him, like... That is a guy who was born before masturbation was invented, and he heard about it, and he's like, oh, God, no. Anyway. Uh, but, yeah. So, if you think that masturbation among young men is caused by them looking and admiring themselves, I don't think even if you're gay, you're going to be, like, looking at yourself and be like, Oh, I've got it. <laughs> like, you're going to be, what's his name from uh, Silence of the Lambs? I I would. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to say the F word on the show. I don't. You say it. Anyway. I, me, you said the F word, not me. That's on you. Okay. Anyway, moving on. How to not celebrate Palm Sunday. When in bed, if that is where you have your problem for the most part. Dress yourself for the night so securely that you cannot easily touch your vital parts, and so that it would be difficult and time-consuming for you to remove those clothes. By the time you've started to remove protective clothing, you would have sufficiently controlled your thinking that the temptation would leave you. Okay, hold up. Hold, 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 find and hold a phone. 
are you serious right now? Like, y- you want someone to, like, take coveralls and zip them up from the back <laughs> and then put on a hazmat suit and then, uh, oh, no, I got it. I got it. <laughs> you, you're like, good night, Mom. Good night, Dad. And they're like, hey, son, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's that you're wearing for pajamas? Oh, this uh, this is a full set of hockey goalie gear. I'm, I'm dressed up like Curtis Joseph. You remember Cujo? Cujo, yeah. Played for the Leafs for a while. Played for the Coyotes. Freaking uh, Red Wings did him wrong and we never forgive them for that. Cujo. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. He, uh... He is my favorite goalie, and uh, I'm dressing up like him for the bedtimes. Used to wear Ninja Turtle pajamas, and now I wear Curtis Joseph pajamas. And yes, it is necessary for me to wear the blocker glove. And I'm taking the Sherwood stick with me to bed. Sherwood is, in fact... A hockey stick brand. It would have been less funny if I had said Louisville or Coho. Easton is right out. Anyway, moving on. But yeah, you got to wear them difficult clothes. Difficult clothing. Hockey goalie. How to not disturb the waters of Ripliancum. The waters of Ripliancum uh, are it's a place name from the Book of Mormon. Remember when Shiz and Coriantumr were fighting that great and final battle that is very similar to battles in history where, you know, that exact thing happened exactly like that totally all the time because it's very normal and very accurate depictions of ancient battle tactics. Anyway, here we go. Pray. But when you pray, don't pray about this problem, for that will tend to keep it in your mind more than ever. Pray for faith. Pray for understanding of the scriptures. Pray for the missionaries. The general authorities, wait a minute. Isn't Mark E. Peterson a general authority? Is this whole thing a secret scam for him to get extra prayers for himself? I bet it is. He's a prayer hoarder. Good thing God doesn't listen to those. We learned about that. Don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, uh, and your friends, your families, but keep the problem out of your mind by not mentioning it ever. Not in conversation with others, not in your prayers. Keep it out of your mind. Yeah. Yep, don't pray for help with the thing that's a problem. Don't do it. Actually, that's a good idea. Good call. Don't don't pray for help with the thing that's a problem because God's not going to... He has a plan. And you, you're going to putz with his plan with your prayers about like, Dear God... I keep touching myself in places and it feels extra special and um I was just hoping if maybe you could make me not enjoy it perhaps as much. Okay. How to not shuck your own corn. When the temptation to masturbate is strong, yell stop to those thoughts as loudly as you can in your mind. And then recite a pre-chosen scripture or sing an inspirational hymn. It is important to turn your thoughts away from the selfish need to indulge. You're so selfish. You're thinking about yourself and your own thick, juicy, big old schlabbity wabbity. Bring it on down to the buffet. Big old thick, chunky piece of hunk of hunk of... Anyway, regardless. I'm getting sidetracked. So, like, here's the problem with this. 
Like, do you ever yell stop to your own thought processes and have it work ever? Okay. All right. Think about this flower. This one right here. It's supposed to look watercolored. Does it look watercolored? Just think about this flower. Just focus on it. Okay, now yell stop to your brain and you will never think about this flower again throughout the rest of this thing. You will never look at this flower again. You won't. Okay, moving on. Uh, but yeah, here's the other thing is that like if you're singing hymns and reciting scriptures then are you not pav giving yourself Pavlovian conditioning to where any time it's like, the natural man is an enemy to God and has been since the foundation of the earth. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it, it's for real, though. Um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, like, you, or if you just get a hymn in your brain that's like, Come, come, ye saints, no toil nor labor fear, but with joy. Wend that way, baby. Oh, I like the way you wend that way. Get all up on that Wendy way, Wendy. Anyway, regardless. Uh, yeah. Then all of a sudden you're going to give yourself Pavlovian conditioning where that hymn or that scripture turns you on because you're like oh no i have a problem in my pants where my pants are all excited like my pants bits so i better i better um just say that scripture that i say when my pants bits get excited okay saying that scripture do ba do do ba do do Oh my god, my pants bits are even more excited now. What am I going to do? Yeah, that's exactly what will happen. And it'd be like, oh, now I'll sing a hymn. Come, come, you... Oh! He was scared by a ghost. That was a ghost, people. I don't know what you think just happened. It was a ghost. Because ghosts are definitely real. They totally exist. 100% because there is unified ghost theory you have, from one ghost expert to the next they all agree in precisely the same ways how to find them how to determine them how to classify them how to see them actually the most unified thing is that all ghosts are from like the 1800s and earlier <laughs> like there are no new ghosts anyway Moving on. How to not give yourself a low five. Make a pocket calendar for a month on a small card. Carry it with you, but show it to no one. If you have a lapse of self-control... Oh, lapse of self-control. Oh, we all know what you did. You just got all up in your laps. Your self control in that lapse, you're like, ooh, let me take self control of this lapse. Anyway, uh, color the day black. Your goal will be to have no black days. And even the Mormons being all against black things. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> the calendar becomes a strong visual reminder of the self control of self control and should be looked at when you are tempted to add another black day keep your calendar up until you have at least 3 clear months yeah that's uh that totally work it's like hmm you know that part where you're a sexually healthy normal human of your age well there's something that sexually normal humans of your age do and I want you to not do that for three months. Like, what? And then you will reward yourself by being like, I didn't do it for three months. <laughs> like, all right, okay. Fantastic. 
How to not burp the worm. By the way, burp the worm is disgusting. This is a disgusting euphemism. I am opposed to it, but I could not find enough euphemisms that couldn't make up enough off the top of my head. Some of these are mine. I came up with some of these. True story. In the field of psychotherapy, there is a very effective technique called aversion therapy. Okay, hold up. Hold the phone. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, fun fact, I just thought I was recording like 10 minutes worth of video that is now lost for all time because I paused this video while I looked up aversion therapy. Aversion therapy still used um, to use it on people who don't consent is considered inhumane, which makes me wonder about the uh, use of it at all. Even with people who are like, yeah, do it. It's fine. Um, anyway, but yeah, here, here's his thing on aversion therapy. When we associate or think of something very distasteful with something which has been pleasurable but undesirable, the distasteful thought and feeling will begin to cancel out that which was pleasurable. If you associate something very distasteful with your loss of self-control, it will help you stop in, uh, stop the act. For example, if you are tempted to masturbate, think of having to bathe in a tub of worms and eat several of them as you do the act. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, all right. When he says do the act, do we do the act of bathing in worms? Because like the way that it's written, it makes me think like do the act, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm talking about? Do the act. Like, hey, oh, close the door if you're going to do the act in there. I mean, come on. It's your own personal business if you do the act. Anyway, um, so, yeah. I was just imagining, like, some guy sitting butt naked in a bathtub full of worms. And he's just, like, so happy because he's also... Um, self-pleasuring and like and he's eating worms and sitting on worms and pulling on one of them and then like it just makes them all happy and then like I just it just seems like a formula for a very weird and specific fetish you know what I'm saying it's like I, I want to get a poll of Mormon guys in the 1970s who were like I like worms for some reason. I don't know why. I just like them. I, I get a thing of night crawlers to go fishing, and all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, I want to throw these in a bathtub. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's a weird thing. Okay. How to not tenderize your own meat. Keep your bladder empty. Refrain from drinking large amounts of fluids before retiring. Okay. Okay, okay, look, buddy, um, not all of the things that you do with your male-type genitals, assuming you have some. I mean, we are led to believe that you are, in fact, a, a gentleman with both an X and a Y chromosome uh, who, like, has the required uh, male equipo equipment and so like if you do you should understand that like there are different um substances which could be produced by that particular bit uh so like you know p is not the same as a an ejaculation you know, when that girl is like, oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, you might be saying, oh, yes, all by yourself. And that'd be one thing. But like needing to pee, that's an entirely different thing. That has nothing to do with anything. This is weird. This is a weird list. How to not wrestle your eel. Reduce the amount of spices and condiments in your food. Eat as lightly as possible at night. Okay. 
uh, spices and condiments. Like, you, <laughs> what? You could put some sriracha on, on some food. You could put some sriracha on some Kahlua pork, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey now. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, like, hey, myself, how you doing? You just had a Jalisco taco because Felipe was like, you have to try the Jalisco tacos at my work. And I did. We had some today. They were spicy and delicious. And guess what? Like, spicy and delicious, uh, that's exactly the wrong thing if you want to be a non-sinful uh, person, apparently. Oh, I'm so sinful. Just ate them spicy. Spicy, spicy tacos right up. They were so good. Oh, my God. Anyway, how to not strangle the Cyclops. Wear pajamas that are difficult to open, yet loose and not binding. Okay, wait a minute. They're difficult to open, loose, not binding. What? How can it be all these that, like... Wear pajamas that are both very big and teensy tiny, and uh, that are both loose and tight that will both restrict your movement and allow you to move free. Like what? Okay. Uh, how to not mix your own mayonnaise. Yeah, I, I came up with a thank you. That's me. That I, I did that one. Avoid people, situations, pictures, or reading materials that might create sexual excitement. Um, when you are a teenage boy, breathing like your own existence creates sexual excitement because you're all chock full of hormones, and you're like, I, I just, it just, you, I, that's all I think about. <laughs> like, come on, it's a teenage boy. Oh, like it's, reading materials might create sexual excitement. Like anything, any little thing that's even remotely connected to anything having to do with girls or boys, if that's the way you go, like just makes you like, oh, hey, Beavis, uh, check out that one chick over there. <laughs> and yeah, and then you're just like, it totally beavis and butthead is accurate anyway moving on how to not grip your book of mormon too tightly it is sometimes helpful to have a physical object to use in overcoming this problem a book of mormon firmly held in hand even in bed at night has proven helpful in extreme cases you know one of them extreme cases where you're like I'm a healthy male with healthy male sexuality and I just can't stop. And and then you're like, I bet if I just grip the ever-loving crap out of this Book of Mormon, I just, I'm a grip it. I'm a grip it till I poke holes in them onion skin pages. Like, I'm a just grip. And uh, yeah, that's good. That'll stop you. one Because as soon as you're asleep, you will maintain your grip on the... Come on. It's crazy talk. Um, and this one, the greatest advice on anything ever. In very severe cases, it may be necessary to tie a hand to the bed frame with a tie in order that the habit of masturbating in a semi-sleep condition can be broken. Semi-sleep condition? Like, what? I was a teenage boy once, but I never, like woke up and was like, oh, what am I doing to myself? Hey there, friend. Like, what? Never. It never happened. Like, I mean, I'm only basing it off of my own anecdotal evidence, but I'm pretty sure I could ask around and people would be like, no, what? Anyway, uh, yeah. So, Oh, this could be also be accomplished by wearing several layers of clothing, which would be difficult to remove. See, again, the difficult clothes. Like, you got to wear some of them, like, Levi's from the 90s that had the buttons where it's, like, super hard to get that fly open. <laughs> like, what? 
yeah, we're some of those, and then maybe you won't like choke that chicken or whatever. It's like, wh- why, uh, dude? And yeah, like tie a hand to the bed frame. That's just gonna make it more kinky. You're, just, you're gonna have like just the weirdest people running around who are like, huh, worms, <laughs> you know, and. And who are like, uh, I wear lots and lots of layers to bed. What? <laughs> okay, this is, that's the end. That's the end of all the funny things. Let's go through these and we'll be done. This program was made possible by the Igneous and Gertrildina Buttcomer Foundation. Hey, let's try that again. I get those names wrong like 97% of the time. They are ridiculous names, and I only see them at the end. Okay, let's try it again. This program was made possible by the Igneous and Gertrudina Buttcomer Foundation, and by viewers like you. Promotional considerations provided by Ralph Morgan's Extra Strangly Snakes, the Lonely Ass Librarians Guild, Grandpappy True Reels, Foul Smelling Balms and Gruels, and the one and only true God. This program was directed and performed by the mysterious personage. He thinks you're on to him. Boy, does he ever. Written by Braxton White Guy. He's not actually this gray. Like, he's out of the office right now. And, yeah, Guy is not that gray. 100%. He uses graying creams. Uh... Sorry, Braxton, your secret's out. Um, the theme song. Hey, we had a theme song. It totally did. Anyway, by the Out of Tuners. Totally exists. Uh, this has been a presentation of Non Sober Badger Productions, a subsidiary of the large, boring sounding corporation with, a surpri- with surprisingly questionable business practices. Lawful Asset Holdings Incorporated. And a branch of the intentionally vague corporation whose purpose may never be fully known. The Blaine Group. And communism. Not dead yet, suckers. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all the hilarity I have. It's not much. But whatever. Whatever. It, it'll be fine. I'll listen to it. Maybe one student will listen to it and they won't tell me because I'll be freaking upset if they do, given some of the content. But, like, whatever. It is is fun. It's funny. All right. Anyway, people, that's it for this one. Another one in the books. Uh, fantastic. Hope you had some weekend time fun. And we will see you next time. I don't know when next time is going to be. All right, people. We will see you. Okay, bye.